it is now the dead part of the season. So why not start our camp position battle series? Let's jump into this. What is up, Finn fans? This is it. A whole lot of nothing is going to happen for the next month and a half, give or take. Now, I think that the camp uh, dates will be announced this month. So we'll we'll get that. I'll make a video about that, talk about the dates, the, when the joint practices are happening, what day I'm going down for training camp, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I do this series every year and essentially what the series entails is I look at each and every position, quarterback, running back, wide receivers, tight end, each of the offensive line positions. It'll just be one video for the offensive line, defensive line, linebackers, corners, safeties, and then there is no competition for kickers or punters. And I look at it, not in the aspect of who's competing to start, because in some areas that might be a possibility, but more who's competing to make the team and who's competing at what position. Like at running back, there might be a competition for the number four spot or there might be a competition for the number three spot between Jalen Wright and um, Jeff Wilson. So that's the kind of the gist of what this series has been for all the new people. First off, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Um, so that's kind of what this series is about. You get these videos. I'm going to sprinkle them, probably do about two a week, as well as other content. And again, we got a lot of stuff to talk about in the next month and a half. And I'm going to try my best to keep you entertained. Um, so that's what the plan is for today. We're just starting with quarterbacks. And again, this video is more about between Mike White and Skylar Thompson. Uh, I know that there's an undrafted free agent that they brought in. I really doubt that he is going to make the roster. To me, that battle is between Mike White and Skylar Thompson. And obviously, I'm going to get into a whole spiel about that in this video. And also, I'm going to get to one of your comments of the day because it also entails about the quarterbacks. And that's kind of the theme of today's video. So without further ado, let's jump into this video now. Obviously, Tua Tungavaloa is the starter of the Miami Dolphins. Right now, uh, the Dolphins are working with him and his agent to get him a contract extension. Do I feel that he should get one or any of that jazz? We'll just go watch my Kurt Warner video. And I go into great detail on my thoughts and feelings of Tua Tungavaloa and all that stuff. And I, I've done it time and time again, yet people ignore it. And they come to their own conclusions about my thoughts and feelings when they're all out there. It's funny. It's funny. But yeah, two is the starter unless some craziness happens and the Dolphins can't get a contract done with them and somehow they trade him and they pull off some crazy trade and bring a quarterback in and oh my goodness, not happening. There's, the chances of that happening are like 0.0001% chance. Two is the starter this year. Uh, worst case scenario, that whole situation he plays on his fifth year next year they can't get his contract done depending on how he played on that fifth year they either move on or they franchise tag him if they can't get him under contract that is worst case scenario best case scenario he gets a contract done before training camp and i think that's what's going to happen but let's just really quickly talk about Tua tongue of Iloa and how he did last year well last year Two through for 4,679 yards, which is number one in the NFL. He had a 69.3 completion percentage, which was number three in the NFL. He had 29 touchdowns, which was tied for fifth in the NFL. He had 105.5 passer rating, which is fourth in the NFL. So overall, uh, the four major passing stats, he was top five in the NFL. And again, that's where Tua and his agent are sitting back being like, I was fully healthy. I gave you top five in all four major passing stats. We made the playoffs. I think I should get some type of contract restructuring. How much? That all depends on them. You guys know how I feel about it. Again, it's on the videos. Just go to the search bar and type in to a fifth year option, to a contract, and you get my opinions. Um, but there was this image that I was like, interesting over the last two years when it comes to passing yards per game passing yards uh, per attempt passer rating and passing touchdowns Tua is first 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 and second when it comes to Tua versus quarterbacks currently earning 
50, 50,000, 50 million or more average a year, which is the likes of Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, jo Justin Herbert, Goff, Lamar Jackson. So that's another thing that two is probably sitting back and being like, I'm doing good. And of course, before you comment below or as you're commenting this, hopefully you didn't pause it to listen. People are going to come out and say, well, that's because of Mike McDaniel or that's because of the two best wide receivers in the game. And that has nothing to do with Tua because you could put a, a cantaloupe with a helmet back there and they would get the same yardage. Lazy take. Say it. By all means, it's a lazy take. We saw what happened with Teddy Bridgewater, Skylar Thompson, Mike White. Lazy take. That's all I'm going to. From now on, I'm not getting into fights with people over lazy takes, over predetermination, over premature determination. And I'm just goose for bosh. For this next month and a half, it's just, <sighs> okay. That's my response to people who are like, Tua can't do this. Tua doesn't do this. Tua, uh, you're a Tua near because you say positive things. Yeah, you say negative things, but you say positive things. That makes you a Tua near. My response, okay. Whatever you say. And you'll say it because I'm going to say in the comment section. Oh, that will be my replies to those people. Okay. Whatever you say. I tell you, it feels good. It feels good. It feels really good. So that's Tua Tonga Vailoa. That's your starting quarterback for the 2024 season. I almost said 2015. Time's flying too fast. Now we get into the bread and butter. Now we get into the competition of the uh quarterbacks and now we start with mike white now you guys know how i feel about mike white and i am very iffy about mike white being the backup quarterback i do not have a good feeling nor do i feel like he if god forbid worst case scenario happens he could help us now there are people who are out there think that again you could put cantaloupe with a helmet on so mike white would do just as good as tua in this offense and my response is okay whatever you say so this is what i'm talking about so this is mike white's stats in 2021 now if you notice with the last two years that he was with the jets it was the same situation he comes out does really well. Cincinnati, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Whoa, threw for 405 yards. Wowzers. That's really good. Next game, not so good. One touchdown, only threw for 95 yards, no interceptions. He only got hurt a little bit. But then, hey, he came back out, played against Buffalo. Hot garbage. Zero touchdowns, four interceptions, 251 yards, a 33.4 passer rating. Doo doo butter. Then, his last year with the Jets, it was the same thing, but kind of worse. You got Chicago, whoa, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, 315 yards, 149.3 passer rating, 78.6 completion percentage. Mike White, Mike effing White is what they called him. And then Minnesota couldn't get in the end zone through two interceptions, 59.8 uh, passer rating. Against Buffalo, nothing. And he actually got hurt against Buffalo again. And then against Seattle, nothing. Zero touchdowns, two interceptions, just like right down the pooper. And then he had a short stint with the Dolphins where we put him in because, hey, we're blowing Denver out. Comes in, throws a nice touchdown pass to um, Chosen. Woohoo! Carolina, hey, we're doing really well. Hey, Mike, you want to go in there and uh, try something out? Throws a pick six. And it's like, <laughs> come on, man. So it's like, to me, it's the, it's the, you know, the insanity thing, you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting something different. I just don't, I don't feel good of, about him being a backup quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. I don't. And if the Dolphins do move on from him, it's a $3.5 million savings. So they're sitting at, I don't know what they're sitting at right now when it comes to cap space. I'll look that up, but I just, I, I'm just iffy about it. Dolphins right now are sitting at $18.8 .8 million in cap space. They're about middle of the pack in the NFL right now. So if they did move on from uh, Mike White at any point, 
it's not going to happen now. It would have to happen like during the cuts, which I don't think it'll happen. They'll be extended out like 21 million if they don't sign anybody else. And they still haven't signed two of their um, draft picks, their first two draft picks. So for me, I'm just like, I feel iffy. And then you have Skylar Thompson, 2022, Tua got hurt a bunch of times. And then Teddy Bridgewater got hurt, hurt a bunch of times. He had threw for 534 yards. Had a 57.1 completion percentage. He had one touchdown, three interceptions. He had a 62.2 passer rating. And there were some games where I'm like, I see. My biggest gripe with Skyler is I see his potential. It's the same thing. And it's funny. I get no pushback for this, but I get pushback for Tua. I see the same. Like, I see the potential. It's just, can you put it together? And it's the same thing with Tua. There was so much. Skyler has such a strong arm. But in 2022, it was a lot of him like hesitating. I always noticed that he would either like like do one of those and then throw it, or he'd pat the ball and then throw it. When if he would have just trusted his instinct and rolled out, like there's a lot of times he'd roll out to his right and he'd be like, and then he would throw it. If he rolled out to his right, saw his guy, he's got the arm. He's got the arm to make those throws. For him, it's up here. It's a lot of him getting in his own head. You look at the Bills playoff game. A lot of people, you know, bring that up and say, he almost beat the Bills. He almost beat the Bills. And I'm like, pump the brakes a little bit on that because he did throw two interceptions that gave the Bills points. And yes, there were some drops, but a good portion of those throws were under throws where the defender got in Waddle's stomach and punched the ball out. And then some of them were overthrows. Now, again, I'm not blaming Skyler for the loss, but the two interceptions hurt a lot. And yes, there were some drops, but also his inaccuracies hurt as well. But he he was look at his draft status. And I, to me personally, when you look at this competition between Mike White and Skylar Thompson, I honestly would feel more comfortable with Skylar Thompson being the backup quarterback than I would with Mike White. Because He's been in the system longer. He understands it better. And I just like what I saw out of him. Yes, it in, in spots, it wasn't good. Again, one touchdown, three interceptions isn't good. The Jets game at the end of the year wasn't good. There was some other, you know, it, it's just, I, I see it. But then I also, I'm like, he hasn't played all last year. So he's been sitting back and he's been learning in the system over and over again. And if he gets it up here, he could be really dangerous. So for me, I prefer Skylar Thompson as the backup. I would cut Mike White, save that $3.5 million, um, and w- worst case scenario, go grab another vet as your backup. If you don't feel comfortable with Skylar, there's plethora of vets out there Um I'll look it up right now. There's a plethora of vets out there that quarterbacks that you can bring in. And to me, again, I I might sound like a a Mike White hater, but would just be a better option than Mike White. Like Ryan Tano. Somebody clipped. (laughs) So I was on me, myself, and this guy with uh, Stephen D. And he asked me what I bring back. Ryan Tannehill as a backup. I said, I bring back Ryan. I know. Welcome Ryan Tannehill with open arms as a backup. But somebody clipped it and didn't finish the clip of me saying as a backup and like started going on people's live stream. It was like, Doug said he would bring back Ryan Tannehill. It's funny how that stuff works. But like Ryan Tannehill, there's some other vets that are out there that have more experience. But I just, I have no faith in Mike White. I just don't. He hasn't shown me anything. It's been the same thing. Oh, he got a really good game, and then he falls off the cliff. Oh, he had a really good game, and then he falls off the cliff. I just, I don't feel it. Comment below. Who would you take as your backup quarterback, Mike White or Skylar Thompson? Or would you take the undrafted free agent we brought in? Comment below. Let me know. And I'm going to get to one of yours. Comments of the day. And this is a good comment. Again, coincides with uh, the theme. This one comes from Mr. Expert. He says, comment of the day, two-part question, to a size, meaning small. He's not that small. He's like six foot, six foot one. He's he's not that small, but I get it. You want your prototypical quarterback. You want him like six, three and above. Will the weight loss compromise his already questionable durability if it's making me think 
it's making Ross think. Will his uh, n- his new size affect his contract situation? Very good question. Very, very good question. Will uh, the weight loss compromise his already questionable durability? No. And a lot of people, even um, Mike McDaniel came out and said that that misconception that he put the weight on for the durability issue is wrong. That's not the reason why he did it. Um, he came out and literally said that. I, him not, him playing the full year had nothing to do with him putting the weight on. And some people have pushed back on me on that, but it hasn't. The What has kept him playing the full season is the getting the ball out quick and learning how to fall properly, which is funny to say because you're like, quarterback should learn how to fall properly. But if you actually watched him last season, he was rolling through his, his falls better. The jujitsu worked. Um, that's what kept him healthy. It wasn't the weight gain. The weight gain actually kind of hindered his game and his play style because if you go back and watched him his rookie year, especially against the Cardinals, he was all over the place and he was sliding. He wasn't taking unwarranted hits. Um, and that's probably what he's trying to get back to. Obviously not that style, but maybe a, a you know complimentary one-two punch of that style. Um but I, I honestly uh, wholeheartedly do not think the reason he stayed healthy was because he got bigger. Because if you look, least uh, his time to throw, which isn't his release time, people kind of get that mixed up where, oh, that's because he gets the ball out quick. That's why his time to throw so low. No. Time to throw is the when your back foot hits, how much time do you have in the pocket to get the ball off? Time to throw before you get pressure on you. His is dead last. Dead last in the NFL among so many, more than 32 quarterbacks. He is dead last. But his hits are also dead last. He was barely hit. And that's because that's where it coincides with his first read narrative is because he wasn't getting hit because he was getting that ball out quick. You know, he didn't have much time. So first read, first read. I got to get the ball out quicker. I'm going to get these hits. Because the offensive line in front of him was also dead last in pass blocking win rate, or 31st, not dead last, second to dead last. So that's where you know he stayed healthy. It wasn't because of the weight gain. It was because of the play style. It was because of the other things he learned. And then you also said if it if it's making me think, it's making Ross think. Will his size affect his contract status situation? I don't think it'll affect the situation and the fact that the Dolphins don't want to sign him because obviously they're in contract negotiations with him. I think it'll affect his contract in the situation. And I think this is probably something that is holding it up is that they're trying to probably make it an incentive based contract, not a hundred percent. Like he's going to get his money, but they're going to put stuff in there and they're going to protect their butts when it comes to injuries. Because if, you know, three out of the four years that you're in the NFL, you've been getting dinged up and missing time. They're going to put some types of clauses and and you know, outliners in the contract to protect themselves from you getting hit uh, hurt and then being stuck paying you however much and you keep getting hurt. So I think that's probably what it is. You know, his agent athletes first probably want money here and this situation here and this here. And then the Dolphins are like, all right, that's fine and well, but we also want to add, you know, incentives here and then protect ourselves here and also have an out after, you know, three years here. And it's probably that's kind of what the negotiations are going like. Uh, Do I know that for a fact? No. This is me just making a very educated guess. But thank you so much for the comment. Again, if you want to be part of the comment of the day, put comment of the day at the beginning. And then you either have a comment or a question. Again, it doesn't have to be a question. But that's what I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, this is the first of many series. Again, we have a lot to go until the end of July. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. But like usual, stay classy. And fins out.